let me tell you more revelations, awakenings, things came to the surface in one week than I feel I've ever had happen in my life. If you've been following along on my Instagram stories at Project Me with Tiffany, you have seen that I had my big once a year mastermind experience event at a famous house that is tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. It was featured on the show Selling Sunset. And this has shooketh me. The stuff that has come out of observing all of the students that attended, my team, myself, and there are some missing pieces to the world of abundance, to being able to make more and work less that I have uncovered, that have all come together. And I'm going to be spilling that tea on this episode for you, as I always do. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? It's your host, Tiffany Carter, and this is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. I mean, did you miss me? I did take a week off. It would have been nice for some of you to have really made it clear how much you missed me. (laughs) I did get a couple messages. Of course, I started building a story of like, no one really cares that you were gone, that you were MIA. And I know there's plenty of other episodes that you were called to listen to. But you know, a girl does like to know that she's missed. All right. So let me know if you missed me. I needed that week of reprieve after having my mastermind event. And then I piggybacked it with my biggest investment in my content marketing for this brand ever. I invested about $50,000. It was three days. And let me tell you, this was a lot of energy to host an event, host my team that came in, and then segue right into me having to put on my best shiny smile and contort myself into very uncomfortable positions so that I look snatched for hours and hours and hours and hours. And also having the pressure of knowing, girl, you better show up and shine and get over like any body dysmorphia shit of yours. Because number one, it's not about your body and how you look. You are doing this type of content because this is what happens in a personal brand. You are the marketing element. I could be the widget. I could be the piece of jewelry. I could be the t-shirt line in this particular line of work. I am the product. And wow, that amount of mental gymnastics that I had to get myself into in order to be able to show up genuinely on video and on camera That took more out of me than I was expecting. I'm a grounded ZFG confident person now. Zero fucks given. Oh, I miss doing that. I didn't used to be, right? I had something that I referred to as false confidence. A lot of other people, in fact, almost everyone was fooled by it because I was fooling myself with it where people would always say, oh, you have it all together. I wish I had the confidence that you have. But when they would say it inside, I'd be like, God, if they only knew how riddled I was with self-doubt, I'm not good enough. I'm ugly. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. And I went through, you know, the depths of hell and the deepest healing you can imagine to get to the zero fucks given zone, which is why I help hold space and support and guide you to get there. Because let me tell you something, there is nothing more freeing than not giving a fuck what any person, place, client, job, institution, stranger, hater, relative has to say about what you do with your life. And I'm looking at myself right now, and I know some of you are looking at me on Project Me TV on YouTube, and I decided I'm going to embrace the zit stickers, the zit patches, 
And I was delighted to find that they come in many different shapes and colors now. So of course I had to get purple star ones. So from all of the daily glam that I was in, my skin that we know I highly tend to is not happy. So I'm wearing star zip patches and I just thought, you know what? This is what you guys are going to get today. We show up as we are and we trust that that's more than enough. And I had to keep telling myself that during the content shoot. I am going to do a separate episode breaking that down on how you can DIY your own content shoot. I mean, I will also give you suggestions if you want to take it to a bigger level and hire people. But I, I want you to know that like you can do a scale down version on a low budget. I don't want you to start thinking, oh my gosh, in order for me to scale my business to where you're at, Tiffany, or, you know, that I'm going to have to spend all this money and do all this thing. At some point though, you are going to have to. And that's my first lesson that I want to bring to you in this advice that is coming out of the mastermind and some of it that's coming out of the shoot. But if you want more details on DIYing your own shoot to create eye-catching content that gets you great visibility and converts into profits and, and how my wild, creative, strategic mind plans these things with my team and how you can refine that down and do a version of it for yourself, let me know. I was planning on it anyway, but if you have questions that you want me to cover, I would DM me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany or reply to any of the emails that I send out on my secret posse weekly digest list. If you're not on that list, I'm warning you right now, you're going to want to be on it because there's a couple things that are coming through the pipeline, which is also why we did the content shoot that you will be shooketh over and you're going to want to have first dibs on these things. And you can go to projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash secret posse. You can swipe up. It's also in the show notes. It's in my link in bio on Instagram and TikTok at Project Me With Tiffany. So first thing is what I noticed in this mastermind in all of these successful women from all different specialties, from all different industries, people who've done work on themselves, the one thing that holds people back more than anything, and it just became so undeniable when I was in person with everyone, I already know this when I'm working with people virtually in my programs or my Project Me Posse business coaching membership or one-on-one, -on -one. but when you actually see it and feel it energetically in front of your face and then you watch the transformation that occurs, it slapped me upside the head. What is holding you back from you having everything that you want, the cash, the lifestyle, the freedom, the time, the delight in doing what you do in the sense of ease, being able to express your voice, your story, your creativity in order to help other people have your vision come to life and be wildly paid for it all boils down to ZFG life. It all boils down to truly not giving a rat's ass, a fuck, not even one about what anyone else thinks. If you can do it, if you can't do it, what it comes down to is you knowing that this is in fact, without a doubt happening for you, and you're going to show up regardless, and you're going to show up until it happens, and you're 100% committed. And yes, you're going to have meltdowns, and yes, you're going to have setbacks, and yes, you're going to be heavily tested, and yes, you're going to be scared, and yes, self-doubt is going to come up, and yes, it's going to bring up your insecurities, but you have an unwavering determination and resolve to showing up for what you want so badly that yeah, you might get knocked down for a day. Yeah, you might have a rough week or two, but you keep doing the damn thing. You do it anyway. 
And when I look at my own secret sauce, which I get asked about a lot on when I'm interviewed on podcasts, on TV shows and stuff, they want to know, you know, how did you do this? Like, how did you do this with two different businesses? Like how, what's the, what's the secret? Like there's the secret to success. What's the multi-million dollar thing. And it's really that people will come up with all sorts of excuses at different thresholds of abundance. Everyone has an abundance cap. Some people it's at 10,000 a month. Some people it's being broke. Some people it's at 2000 a month. Some people it's at 500,000 a month. Some people it's about having the support system around them. Some people it's how they're making their money. They're comfortable as long as they're exchanging tons of time and energy for it and they're depleted and they're exhausted and they're miserable and they're resentful, then they're okay making the money. But making it with ease and making it with simplicity and making it with enjoyment, that feels so unfamiliar and so untrusting that they'll do things to sabotage that subconsciously in order to go back into the pattern that they're comfortable with. So one of the main things that we did at the mastermind experience was to release what was no longer serving them. Release it. The stuff that they know that has been chewing at them and haunting them. And even if they weren't sure there was something that was buried layers deep, being willing for it to come up and allowing space for that to come up to release it. Because what's crazy is, and this was not planned, day two of the mastermind was the eclipse. So it was the bookend of the eclipse season. And this eclipse season was all about releasing behaviors, patterns, people, habits, thoughts that are not serving you. And also being allowed to have the space, like I said, for them to come up because a lot of them you're not aware of what they are. They need to be brought up to the surface. So I had specialists and healers there along with what the work that I do with people in order to prime them for that. And it was just so interesting to watch that we, every single person literally was broken open, not in, not in an extreme way. This was a light version. Okay. This was not you know, this was not some, some heavy, deep thing where we wanted to re-traumatize people. Okay. I'm very well aware. Most of the people that I attract, most of my listeners are trauma survivors or have, um, some sort of <laughs> mental unwellness, right? Like, cause like attracts like, so we don't do anything too intensely because that's not necessary. And we wanted to allow this space because if you don't allow there to be this space where you have released these things that have been clogging up your abundance pipes that have been causing the tension and the worry and the stress that have been weighing you down energetically, making you feel tired, making you feel confused where you, where you don't have the clarity that you want. Your creativity has been stifled you're not going to have any momentum. Every single person released and it was undeniable and so beautiful to witness. Witness it in person and feel it and see it and how it changes people's bodies. And I even saw people who had a lot of inflammation. I even saw the inflammation go down in them. I even saw the guards that people have up to protect themselves and the walls that they have to protect themselves. I saw those come down. I saw people breathing deeper versus, you know, breathing up in their throat. It was amazing. And I said something in my closing training or talk, my parting words where I said, and I, and I want you to hear this. You need to hear this. All of you need to hear this who are listening and watching this right now, that when we release something, like I said, it can be something physical. It could even be you cleaning out your closet. It could be a toxic person in your life, someone who um, really just doesn't belong in your life anymore. It could be a program or an offer or a product in your business. It could be an employee. It could be a client. It can be 
your old self. It could be that you were attached to your old operating system and it's time to let that go. It could be your ego and you need to have an ego death. Like I so much had that came to a head on my birthday this year. And what I told everyone is this space where you feel light now and you feel free. And I know you can all feel it in your body where it feels lighter, where it used to feel like you had 25 pancakes in your stomach. And now it's completely clear. It's so foreign to you. It'd be like you carrying a backpack that had a 50 pound weight on it. And I cut the backpack off you and it feels light and it feels amazing. And there's even euphoria and dopamine and oxytocin and all sorts of hormones that feel so good. But I warned everyone, your ego is going to come in louder than ever and try its damnedest in order to pull you back into what feels familiar, even though that familiar wasn't working for you, even though that familiar was uncomfortable, even though that familiar was holding you back from what you wanted, it's going to try to pull you back and it's going to be manipulative. It's going to be cunning. It's going to be seductive. It's going to be alluring. It's going to pull out its best tricks. You're dealing with a narcissist in your own brain is what's happening. And if you do not get on the offense of it and make sure that you are putting into practice every day, multiple times a day, keeping this new space open to receive abundance by doing things like changing your routine or creating a new morning routine and an evening routine, taking more time for stillness, taking more time and intentional time to take in things that are abundant, listening to this podcast, doing my season of abundance guided walking meditation, which you absolutely should be doing. That is my free gift to you. It's called your season of abundance. There's a bonus one in there that you'll absolutely love. Those are in the show notes. You can swipe up and get that. It's also my description on YouTube. And remember, you need to be on my list because something that I have been asked for over and over again for years now, at least a couple years, and the other thing I've been asked for for many years, almost since the beginning, is happening. And you've got to be on my Secret Posse Weekly Digest email list in order to get it. So make sure you're doing those things. But even paying attention on what conversations you're having with people, what conversations you're having with yourself, what are you watching on TV, what are you reading, being much more intentional with everything and making that space for yourself and keeping that space open in your body of what you release so that you allow that to continue to stay open to receive but it's so unfamiliar to have this space. It's that in between, it's uncomfortable, it's vulnerable to receive. You're used to, you're okay receiving to a certain point or receiving as long as you are exchanging it with something, but simply to receive in pure abundance for simply being you is so crazy, scary, unfamiliar and unknown to people that your ego will take center stage and end up filling it with going in a scroll hole, drinking, back to workaholism, back to focusing on tasking, 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 doing, 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 getting obsessed and worried about someone else in your life, getting worried about something, filling it with worry, filling it with self-loathing, filling it with sugar, filling it with something instead of leaving that space open to receive. And I can tell you that almost every single person that came to my mastermind, my team and I with, and this is with love, not with judgment. We watched every single person for the most part, with the exception of a few people fill the hole 
with a limiting behavior, a limiting belief, a limiting thing. Go back, go back into it. Let the ego take over. Because being in that pure space of abundance and joy was so uncomfortable and not having the threshold to sit in it. To the point where I sent an email out to everyone, you know, with love and reminding them and writing what I said and that this is the work that needs to be done, that this is happening so that they can see their own pattern and take accountability for their own shit and what they do and why they're not achieving or getting or having or being in the energy of the life that they want. They're the common denominator, as am I in my own life. I, I know that. We all are. And seeing how you can be cracked open, you can release. But if you're just going to stuff that beautifully clear and clean and brand new abundance pipe with more gunk, and then you just repeat the pattern, right? Okay, now I have another release. And now I'm just going to stuff it again. It's kind of like when people are in the cycle when it comes to like food, right? Or they will lose some weight, but then they'll do something to sabotage it and then eat and drink and then gain it back again. And they're in that cycle. It's very similar. And most people I know have been in cycles like that when it comes to their bodies. That's why I use that analogy. And you know you're doing it. You hate that you're doing it. You don't want to do it. But, but then it's crazy that you do because you feel so much better when you're eating cleaner and you're drinking enough water and you're not over consuming shit and you're not putting a ton of toxins in your body. Yet when you get to a certain threshold of feeling good and feeling abundant, you sabotage it. This happens in every single area of people's lives. And it was wild to witness the amazing feeling of having that space. I know what that feels like. And I know you might even have had moments where you know what that feels like. And to watch everyone feel that and in their own way, their egos are that strong where they just grab a hold. Our egos are wild. So my question to you is, what are you going to do in order to make sure that you have the support and the accountability to not let your ego, that narcissist, that inner bully, that nasty inner critic, that critical parent that's living in your brain, seduce you back into that lower frequency of abundance, seduce you back into defaulting in your old operating system. That's not going to get you to where you want to go. What are you going to do to set yourself up so you don't go back there? To tell yourself the lie that I'll just do it on my own. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll do this better on Monday. I won't put any of this food into my house. I'm not going to scroll as much anymore. I'm, I'm going to be more consistent with this, that, or the other. Um, I'm going to, you know, binge Tiffany's podcast and do a new morning routine. But if you know yourself and you have a history of not being compliant and really sticking to it, then wouldn't it be insane to not set things up differently to make sure that you do stick to it. And if you're resistant to setting up that level of accountability, my question is, why would you not set up a level of accountability to make sure that you are absolutely set up for that new operating system of yours to stick and take hold and take place so that you can thrive, so that you can go to that next level that you want to go to. Mm, do you not do you not really want it? I don't think that's the case. Because when I looked at all these women, all of them wanted it. And for the most beautiful reasons, you do really want it. 
but then it comes down to deserving it. That's the other big thing that shook me here is the amount of women that externally and, and listen, I was one of them. Okay. I was TV newscaster. I looked very confident. I was a top sales trainer. I was wearing the Ann Taylor suits. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I laugh. I laugh at these pantsuits and pencil skirts that I wore. Let me tell you, I thought buying an Ann Taylor suit, let alone a J. Crew suit, I was thriving. I was rich because when I first started out, my ass was going to pay less getting the BOGO the buy one, get one free shoes that were made of plastic and had um, rubber soles. And when my ass was traipsing around Las Vegas in the summer, hunt the pavement's probably 140 degrees temperature. So my peeps who are outside of the US, let's just say you could fry, literally, you can fry an egg on a hood of a car or on the pavement in Las Vegas in the summer. And I'm traipsing around. I'm a drug rep. I'm selling stuff, right? And I kept thinking that I was stepping on gum and I had gum in my shoe. No, it's because my Payless shoes that were $18 have melted to the actual pavement. Thank you so much. And that Tiffany seemed so competent, seemed so put together, even seemed radiant but it was a mask. It, in fact, the people that you think have it the most together and really lead with that are also the people who are in the most pain silently. And it makes me sad. It made me sad to see it because I was one of those people. And I know that's why I call these people in for me to work with them. It's not just for the strategy. It's not just for me to show you how to make more money and make more while preserving yourself and getting your life back and your time back and all these things. All of it comes together. You have to believe that you're fucking worthy of it and you're capable of it and you're deserving of it for being you. Because there's no strategy I can teach you. I could have, I could do every single piece of content for you. Product design, the best of the best of the best. And it won't work if there is some part of you that deep down doesn't think that you're worthy of having an easy life, that doesn't think you're worthy of having true abundance, that doesn't feel worthy of being able to make a shit ton of money doing what you want to do because it feels easy and it feels fun and you're helping people. And so it feels dirty. It feels gross. I'm not supposed to be making all of this money helping people. Like there's something wrong with that. I'm a bad girl. Something's wrong with me. I have to be trading something that feels so sacrificing to me in order to make a lot of money. Because I can't just be loved and adored and abundant simply for being me. This shit runs that deep. It runs right on deep to childhood town. And there are people that you watch online that I've coached, that I have had many conversations with. There are people who you admire and behind the scenes there are people who have all these followers are making literally zero dollars tons of them come to me it's wild wild you would think how is that possible well you can be an amazing talent an amazing writer an amazing community builder an amazing at a craft an amazing artist, a creative. I mean, how many people have you met that you're like, God, this person's such a great singer. Like, how is this person not famous? Or you meet someone who's such a great writer, or so good at graphic design, or so such a talented healer. And you're like, how is this person not more well known, or at least like making a shit ton of money or being a bestseller? Like, 
Why is that? It's not because no one's interested in them. It's not because the world's unfair. It's not because, oh, uh, abundance is only for a select few. That's all bullshit. It's because you cannot be an energetic match for what you want in life. It's not going to be called in if you ultimately don't think you're worthy of it. If you don't think it's destined to be yours, if you don't really go, I get to claim this, this is fucking mine. No matter what my parents said or did to me, no matter who the fuck I married, no matter what nasty person says online, no matter what my ego tries to convince me of and bring me down, no matter what that teacher said to me when I was in seventh grade, no matter that I was the class slut in middle school with my name written on the bathroom walls, Tiffany is a slut. No matter that I was only worth something if I was doing everything in every possible way for my mother and whoever she wanted me to service and please. I had to go on the journey and not alone of getting to the point of, you know, fucking what I deserve to shine. I deserve to be famous. I deserve to have great wealth with the gifts that I have and own your gifts and own that those gifts deserve to help so many people. And you deserve to be highly compensated in time, in joy, in money, in opportunity, in peace. And no one can do that for you. But the mistake that is made is that you continue to try to do this on your own. And you continue to think, I'm going to be in self-will and I'll just, I'll do it differently this time. And even listening to this episode, I'm going to claim it for myself. Uh, Tiffany, you're speaking to me. I hear you. I fucking get it. I hear you. I deserve it. I'm going to believe this now. But if it's not sticking, which the likelihood is almost zero, it's going to stick. If you don't have a plan in place to be on the offense of that fucking narcissist in your brain, because you're going to get tested because life tests you. You're dealing with the wackadoo of the entire world. You're going to get tired. You're going to be sick. You're going to have stuff come up. You're going to have a hater. You're going to have a bad review. You're going to have a bad month in your business, a bad few months in your business. There's all sorts of things that are going to happen. And how are you setting it up so you're not going to let that take you down? Do you have someone like me that you're paying to work with you? And by the way, my final three spots for the rest of the year, that's all that's left. I did open them up to my mastermind students first in that email, as was fair. And now I'm opening them up to you. I will put that link to apply to work with me in the show notes, but I need to say this. This is the highest level way to work with me. There are only three spots and then we're closing out my calendar for the year by the time I'm recording this, right? They might already be gone. I don't know. And only apply if you're dead ass about this. Don't apply just to try to get on a call with me. Don't apply to try to reverse engineer my process. Only apply if you're like, I need to fucking do this. Enough's enough already because I can't help you if you're not at this spot. I can't make you want it. I can't make you have that conviction and that commitment. I can support you. I can show you the way. I can help your brain get back in the game when you fall out without a doubt, just like my coaches do for me. But I can't give you the humble willingness that you're going to do what it takes. So only apply if that resonates with you and you can swipe up and that's in the show notes. The final lesson I want to share here, because I'm cautious about giving too much with this, because these are really potent topics that I know you need to kind of sit with. And I want you to share this episode 
with someone who you know has been kind of sitting there like they're sitting in that in between. I either they're saying they're stuck, they're confused. Should I leave the jobby job? Should I take this business to this level? Why isn't my business growing at the rate I want? Why am I not calling in the high level clients that I want? I'm only calling in these lower level clients who, you know, are being cheap. This is what it comes down to. You can go and buy all this shit that's like tells you, oh, you just need to do this one thing. And you need to do this other thing and you need to niche more and you need to post more shit. I, of course, teach you the strategy, you know, in my posse membership in working with me in my two month private business coaching program in my big programs that I launched at the beginning of the year. The strategy is all there, but the stuff we end up doing is this deeper shit because you won't follow through on the strategy. And even if you go through the motions and tick the boxes into following through, it doesn't connect because you're just ticking the boxes out of ego on a surface level. Imagine if I came here and just did podcasts and I had a little checklist and I went, okay, here's the first thing. And I was emotionally disconnected And ultimately underneath, I'm going, no one's going to like this. No one's going to listen. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Like if I had that running narrative and that tape going, that energy would absolutely transmit. I know that you have listened to shows that you've turned off. Most podcasts are fucking terrible, by the way. And I'm not just saying that (laughs) because I'm a top podcaster. Most are terrible. That I there's I don't know what the stat is. My producer Jen told me I think there's only 15% of them that have any traction. And it's not because there aren't people that have wonderful stories and powerful things to share and great wisdom. It's because it's not trans transmuting. Is that the right word? It's not getting across the airwaves because of all the shit that's going on in your head. So here's this last thing. And I've shared a version of this lesson on a TikTok video of mine that went viral. And I hope I do it justice here when I'm sharing it to you right now. Being dependent on external validation for you to be able to feel confident to keep going or that having the knowing that it's working and that this is going to work. And in order for you to have hope, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. Seriously. I, listen, I love external validation. I asked at the beginning of the show. A, a girl would like to know that I was missed since I you know, took a week off from the podcast. You know, it'd be nice. <laughs> but do I really need that to keep going? Of course not. I do not need that. It's I love when you guys are taking the time and the law of reciprocity and writing written reviews on Apple Podcasts. It's the only platform you can do written reviews. I read each and every one. I share a lot of them on social media. It means so much to me that you're taking 30 seconds, literally, that's all it takes to write a review. The shout outs you give of the show, of taking a screenshot, shouting out episodes that you loved sharing it with friends, tapping the five stars on Spotify. Love it. But I didn't have any of that shit in the beginning. I had to take my nail guy, John's phone, and I wrote a review from his phone of my podcast when I first started. I don't have like, I'm not an extrovert. I don't have this like large friend group At the time, I certainly didn't, where I didn't know anyone else doing podcasts or anyone online where I could be like, hey, help a sister out. I didn't get any of that. I got the opposite. I got the crickets. And remember, I'm a professionally trained journalist. I know how to fucking communicate. And I think I'm somewhat entertaining. And I'd already done tons and tons of major healing work. Like I was already in the conviction of, knowing I deserve this and I was committed to showing up until it works. And let me tell you, I got tested and you will get tested. 
How many people do you know? My coach, one of my great coaches, Kara Alwell, The Champagne Diet, her ass submitted tons and tons of books. I mean, countless rejections, rejection, 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 rejection. That rattles you. But her motherfucking ass kept going. And now she has a couple of her books that are published in something insane, like 40 languages. Okay. She kept going. I had Nada in Strata for months and I'm spending all of this money. I'm putting out a podcast in time. And I was like, universe, God, throw me a bone, man. Tell me this is worth doing. And it was it basically, it's like, no, sis, we ain't going to do that until you're not so needy and being codependent on something external for you to keep going. You need to strengthen your faith muscle and you need to detach from the outcome and truly let go. And then we will. And it's funny what happens as soon as you truly detach, as soon as you come to that grounded resolve of my hands are up, I surrender, waving the right white flag. I'm going to keep going. I don't like this feeling. I really welcome the sales. I really welcome the accolades. I really welcome the reviews. I really welcome proof that this is working and this is worth it. But I'm committed to keep showing up until it does. And then that's when it happens. And it can't be faked. God, spirit, universe, angels, spirit guides, aliens, they all know you better than you know yourself. They know when you're faking it. You can't have a half surrender. You can't have a half... <laughs> a half letting go, right? Like it doesn't work like that. That's where there, that is an all or nothing thing. And watching how addicted every single person is, and I can go into an addiction with it too, of external validation to prove that what we're doing is right, that we're worthy of doing this, that it's going to work, that we're going to continue making the money, that we're going to have continued success, that we can go to the next level, that we can do the thing that we really want to do, that we're not crazy for thinking this, that it is all going to work. It's all going to be worth all the investment and the money and the time and the energy and all the things. And every single person at that mastermind has that too. Every single person, we all have it. And that's part of the ego's game with us. And so the key is practicing that detachment. When you make a commitment to yourself, I am committed to showing up no matter what the fuck happens. And you have to say your period of time. I, whatever goal it is, I typically like saying, I'm, I gave my podcast a year. I said, I'm going to give it a year. And if in a year, I literally don't see any clear upward movement of the show, then I will reevaluate. Re re that doesn't mean I would quit, but I'll reevaluate. What is that time frame for you? And it could be for a different section of your business, a different goal that you have. But what is that time frame for you? We have less than three months till the end of the year. This year went by crazy fast. We're in prime money-making season. Are you putting all your cards on the table? Are you going all in on the thing? Or are you toe-dipping and half-assing and half-detaching and half-surrendering, but demanding and expecting and yearning for full-ass results? You have to call yourself out. This is the time to make the all-in play. And stop looking around, well, Oh, I had all these sales calls and, and this didn't go through. And then, oh, I got, I got some clients, but they're not the exact clients that I wanted. And I put out this piece of content and, and like that, this isn't getting the views. It's like, it's one piece of content. Wow. You're putting a lot of weight on one thing or one email, or you mentioned you did one launch, you know, you put out one song you put, you know, that doesn't work like that. That's magical thinking. That's a setup. I know what you want. You want what you want. And you want it now. Absolutely. I want all the inflammation in my body to be gone like yesterday. And I'm a very fucking compliant patient. I'm very compliant when I want something because there's no other way to be other than compliant if you want to get the results. 
And it is tough when I want, when that's when I said, like, I also fall into wanting external stuff, not as much in business. Cause I've really strengthened that muscle. And I know I have my moments, but I've done a lot of work around it. But when it comes to my body, it gets really frustrating. I want to control it. What the fuck? I want the results and I want it now. And it's like the body heals at the pace it needs to heal at. And putting the pressure on yourself is certainly not going to help you heal. It's actually going to slow your healing. Putting the pressure on every piece of content you put out and everything you put out and the anxiety and the stress and the refreshing, refreshing, refreshing and looking and and hoping and searching and where's the sign that's pushing the abundance away. It's putting way too much, too, too much pressure on something where you're snuffing it all out. You're snuffing all the abundance out. So my other question to you is what outcome are you releasing? What do you need to release the need for what? You have a need for family to believe in you. You have the need for pops to say he's proud of you. You have the need to have grow your following faster. You have the need to sell out your retreat. That neediness is codependency. What you're saying is in order for me to believe in myself, I need this to happen. Let me repeat that. In order for me to fully believe in myself, I need X, Y, and Z to happen. The secret is you're fully believing in yourself regardless of when X, Y, and Z will happen. X, Y, and Z will happen, but you have to believe in yourself of regardless of the timing of that happening. If you do not do that work and have the support in doing that work, you will end up quitting. You'll end up taking your foot off the gas. You'll end up going full throttle to half measures which will end up being an, an insane loop because you'll never get there because you never have the consistency. You'll end up putting your foot in the water, then taking it out. Maybe once in a while you'll jump in, but then as soon as you don't get that external validation, you'll fucking take yourself off out, sit on the side, dry yourself off. And then it'll be months before you go back again. You're hearing this because you're in that pattern and you're not meant to get out of it alone. You have so many resources here. You already feel safe with me. You already know me. You know the resources of where you can have that support in working with me. And trust yourself because you not trusting yourself and you not betting on yourself and you not fully believing in yourself you will literally die never getting there. It'll never happen. And I can tell you it's possible because if it was possible for me where I literally had no self-worth, my own mother, my only living relative today who I'm no contact with, sold me to the devil, pimped me out, doesn't even call me on my fucking birthday. And I was like the prize, perfect little daughter, you know, trying to do whatever I had to do to appease the narcissist. And I was discarded and I had nothing and I had nobody. And if I was able to get to a place of knowing that I am inherently worthy for being me, and my desires are absolutely powerful and they are possible and it is all happening. And as long as I am here and I'm committed and I'm humble and I'm willing and I continue to do the work and ask for help and invest in myself and surround myself with quality people and continue to show up no matter what. And I'm committed to my vision. I'm committed to my thing and continue to detach. I'm proof for you that it works and I want this for you and I know you want it for you and those are the true bottom line secrets to success wishing you great health wealth and worth as always love you